Okay, we're here today to talk about roses and propagating roses and propagating roses from cuttings. Uh, you go online, you go wholesale, you go retail, it's ouch in the pocketbook. Buying a bare root rose or a container rose will cost you variously from 25 to 50 plus dollars. Um, and you can produce roses pretty easily and certainly much cheaper by taking cuttings from them, stem cuttings. Um, there are a number of times a year that the plant is amenable to rooting from stem, short stem cuttings. And one kind of overarching thing is in plants in general, when it comes to taking cuttings, flowering and rooting are hormonally antagonistic activities. All right, to cut to the quick, you don't take cuttings when a plant is blooming. You do it a month or so before or a month or so after. It's just a hormonal situation. So uh, having said that, as the overarching kind of thing, um, there are a number of times during the calendar year when you can take cuttings. Um, the principal ones would be what are called softwood cuttings. And that would be tip cuttings in the spring when the plant has come out of dormancy and before it blooms. And uh, rumor has it, textbooks say you can do this. My experience is it's very difficult. They're so succulent and nitrogenous that they tend to, even under the best of conditions, even in a, a mist system, they tend to rot. Uh, so move along through spring and bloom, post bloom, the stems that grew and bloomed in April and May will harden, build up carbohydrates in late June, July, August. And this is a time of year where it's very easy to take cuttings and you're probably gonna have a pretty high success rate. And these would be called semi-hardwood cuttings. They're not soft and they're not hard. Hey, they're right smack dab in the middle. Uh, I'll show you a little bit about how to evaluate. What's the degree of firmness you need from the stem, particularly the base of the stem to succeed? So these midsummer into even, well now today is November the 7th, late fall is a good window for taking these semi-hardwood cuttings. They should root a reasonably high percentage, 60, 80% in a reasonably short period of time, uh, four, six, eight weeks like that, and you're off and growing. Uh, come around to the dead of winter, and you can take what's called dormant hardwood cuttings. And that is when the plant is dormant, it's leafless. Um, and these are probably the easiest of all types of cuttings to take off of roses or any other deciduous shrub or tree. Uh, and uh, uh, they also take the longest to root, 10, 12, 14, even 16 weeks. But they're easy. So if you're doing leafy cuttings, either the aforementioned softwood cuttings of spring, which I don't recommend, or the recommended midsummer semi-hardwood cuttings, they have leaves. So you need to keep the leaves turgid. You've severed the roots from the stem and you'll need some sort of wetting or misting. A mist box is ideal, but there are other routes to go to keep the cuttings turgid, going strong while they root. The beauty, as it were, of dormant hardwood cuttings is they don't got no leaves. You don't need to worry really much at all. You can just stick them in a pot with a rooting medium, put them in the corner of your propagation shed, water them occasionally, and you're good to go. But uh, like I said, they'll take a while, 10, 12, 14, 16 weeks. But you can't beat the price. <laughs> Firstly, you know, nada. Uh, okay, let's look at a branch here. I have a cantilevered pendant long. The word for branch in rose talk is cane here. Uh, this is all this year's growth. Um, and you go tip to base and you have a different relationship or ratio of succulent nitrogenous material down from the tip to the base to a high buildup of carbohydrates. And either end of the spectrum can be a little problematic. Tip cuttings, as you can see here, are very, whoops, succulent. 
and prone to rot. Basal cuttings will never rot. It's just pure carbons, wood, but they'll take forever in a day. When will they root? Well, I don't know, maybe on the 12th of never. So you want to be, uh, I think it was the Buddha, perhaps Confucius as well, talked about the middle path. Somewhere smack dab in the middle, somewhere along this line, and in fact, quite a few points along this line will give you the good material you need, again, in terms of the CN ratio, the buildup of carbohydrates versus the nitrogen base portion of the branch. Um, so it's quite easy. Um, I'm going to now sever this branch and we'll take it over to the porch and we'll render up some cuttings. And I'm going to go down and down and down and I'm going to say, ouch, because this is a beautiful David Austin Road called Graham Stewart Thomas, but it features tons of little spiny things on it. <laughs> so, ouch. Uh, so I've got this. Uh, run here and we can take it off to the porch and just talk about the suitability of the material along the run here and render up some cuttings. All right, let's talk about how do we go from branch on the bush to seriously rooted cutting in the gallon container that could go out in the ground later this morning. Um, let's look at this end of the spectrum. These are three examples of cuttings I made variously. I made this cutting uh, about a year ago, July, August uh, of 22. And I made these two cuttings last July of 23. They obviously rooted and we potted them up from the sterile rooting medium, we'll get to that in a minute, to a nice potting soil and they're growing on. Um, so uh, it's just something you can do. You like a rose, you want more of it, you can render up cuttings and get them for virtually free. So uh, let's look down this end of the spectrum. Here are three examples of where we're going to go in a minute in terms of demonstrating how to take cuttings, semi-hardwood cuttings. And there's a bunch of different routes that you can uh, go. Uh, basically, you want short cuttings that are at least have two nodes. A node is where leaves come out and at the base of those nodes are buds. Uh, in this case we've got one and two and you need at least two. One below the soil level that will issue forth roots and one above that will continue to have leaves and grow a new shoot and go on and grow on like that. And you can have simply that uh, two node cuttings or you can have longer cuttings. It can be up to six to eight inches. Uh, three, four nodes like that. But let me just say there's a general axiom with roses and it goes something to the uh, effect of shorter, faster, harder. Okay, let's break this down. The shorter the cutting, the faster it is it will root, but the harder it is. What does harder mean? It means it, means it needs more refined environmental conditions like intermittent mist, uh, heat at the base like that. But you need at least two nodes. Uh, and we're talking now about semi-hardwood cuttings taken in midsummer into mid-late fall. And they can be leafy as we have here. They can be short, two nodes or slightly longer. Uh, or they can be leafless. Same thing, I just stripped the leaves off. And it's something to think about. Usually in the beginning of this window, July, August, I'll do leafy cuttings, it's all good. As we get August, September, October, I tend to do leafless cuttings because they're moving towards dormancy and just gonna drop their leaves anyhow. So, but you have options either way. Um, and then uh, I have mentioned a couple times the need for humidity and mist. That is, you need to keep the leaf surface on the cuttings uh, uh, humidified. And uh, there are a bunch of different ways you can do this. You can buy a sophisticated mist system, intermittent mist system program to go off every 20 or 30 minutes for 30 seconds, and it's all good. Uh, you know, professional growers do that, home growers not so much. So uh, what I've got here is longer cuttings, as I mentioned. And, you know, this is representative. I've got one, two, three, four nodes. The leaves retain. Uh, and I've got them in a bigger container than this four inch. I've got them in a gallon pot here. I inserted a few little pieces of bamboo. 
and then I took this polyethylene bag and I misted it, the, misted the cuttings, the media, misted it inside here, and I just simply slip it over as a little humidifying tent here. Uh, and this is uh, simulating a mist system. So what I've got here is a polyethylene bag. And let me say here, and I, I ain't getting around. I'm thinking the highest and best use of polyethylene on the planet is for a self-styled home mist box. Um, you can take it, so you, you wet the medium, you wet the cuttings, you wet the inside of the bag, and you invert like that. You can take a little twist tie like this and seal it off a little bit at the base. And basically, the beauty, as it were, of polyethylene, it is permeable to light and air. So you've got sunlight, you've got breathability, but not water. So it tends to keep the uh, moisture in there. It condenses on the bag and creates its own little weather system. Now, every once in a while, let's define once in a while as, I don't know, maybe every week, 10 days, you check it and you re-up, take the baggie off, re-up the moisture like that, and you're basically good to go. This uh, is not necessary, again, with the dormant hardwood cuttings, but with leafy cuttings, it's really a nice self-style home uh, propagation uh, chamber. Okay, I've got a length of a cane of a beautiful David Austin rose called Graham Stuart Thomas, a nice rich yellow. Rose doesn't know what it is in the sense that it's either a short climber or a vigorous bush, either way it's good. It is a prolific flowerer and has a number of repeat blooms spring through fall. Not much not to like. I want more. Uh, a very valuable cut flower too. That is, it lasts as a cut flower really well. Seven, nine days, something to that effect. So you go from the tip to the base. The tip is very succulent and prone to rot. And you know, I, like I said, I've heard, I've read, I've heard you can take softwood cuttings of tips in the spring, but then the, there's also that old uh, axiom uh, which was repurposed by Marvin Gaye in his great song, I Heard It Through the Grapevine. Believe none of what you hear and only half of what you see. I've seen that this doesn't work very well. And I might add that Creedence Clearwater Revival does a smoking cover of I Heard It Through the Grapevine. All right, moving on. The tips are too succulent, too high in nitrogen content, prone to rot. The base, conversely, will be much woodier, more laden with carbohydrates. And while it won't rot, it may take quite a while to root. It's just not practical. It may take six months to root. Who's going to do that? But somewhere along this transect, you've got a number of stops that give you good material. And a lot of success in taking cuttings of any type of plant, doesn't matter, lavender, sage, rosemary, pomegranate, you name it, is getting that fingertip feel for what is the right degree of firmness both at the tip and at the base. And this is something that comes through experience, a lot of trial and error. I'll see if I can maybe illustrate it here adequately on film. So what am I going to do here? I'm going to just discard the tip. And again, this is like flopsy mopsy. Ain't going to work. Gone. And then I'll say uh, goodbye to a, a chunk of the base, which again, these cuttings wouldn't rot, but might take a number of months to root. We'll pass on them. So I'm going to work somewhere along here. And let's start rendering. And, and, in my estimation, we can have success here, 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 and all the way down to there. So let's just take some cuttings. Uh, you don't have to be totally particular. You want at least two nodes, but they can be three or four. I'm just going to work along here and take a few cuttings. I'll come back in a sec and explain what it is that I'm doing. And I think we'll have a reasonable degree of success, and I will continue down the line variously. And when I say reasonable degree of success, I mean at least 60 to 80 percent of these cuttings should root, uh, and in a timely manner. So let's just look at one. I've got 
a firm tip and a firm base, and in truth, there's not much difference between them. It's good. I'm going to take, in this instance, a one, two, three node cutting. Again, a node has a bud at the base of the leaf, but those that are going to be under the soil level will be stripped, and maybe you can see the little nubbin bud there. Run it up from cuttings, make most of the roots right at the node. So that'll be a root source. Then I'm going to move up a little bit to a second node and a third node. Uh, and you can keep the leaves intact, or you can do a little bit of reduction of surface area to reduce transpiration and wilt. But a cutting like this is, well, not half bad. And so it goes, this one's a little longer. Let's just strip, retain, but reduce. We're off and running. And yet again, rinse, repeat. Strip, I don't like the drooping edge of it. Strip, reduce. So I've got three cuttings here, two of which I'm holding up here, that should be serviceable. Um, and I will just continue down the line here a bit. Let me just show you a few other refinements or considerations. And I'm going to pass on that. So you're cutting cuttings off the cane. and. This is probably not totally important in the summer when they're leafed out, but really important and useful in the winter when they're dormant, as in you want to know which end is up. Uh, so if in general you make your top cut tight to a bud above it, and the reason for that is if you leave stubs with roses when you prune them, they're subject to a, a, a dreaded disease called dieback where it blackens and dies down the stem. So I make a flat horizontal cut at the top, and at the base I make a as I have 45 degree angled cut. And then again, anything that would either be below the surface or droop down onto the surface needs to be removed or reduced. Um, so I've got some good possibilities here. I could, I could have from this three foot section, one, two, three, four, half dozen or eight cuttings. And again, if you do the math versus 20, 25, 30, 40, 45, $50 to buy a bare root or container of roses, uh, well, uh, it's a good thing like that. Okay, I've taken that length of cane and I've rendered it up half dozen or so cuttings. They are generally three to five inches long. They have two or three nodes. I've done a little bit of the reduction of leaf surface to prevent wilt. Um, now let me talk a little bit about a uh, rooting medium. And what you want is a blend, a blend of substances that hold moisture and drain moisture. My two preferred would be one and two blended together in a 50-50 mix like this. This is vermiculite. It's a type of volcanic rock. Um, some of the richest soils in the world are vermiculitic soils, clays that are formed out of this very same rock, vermiculitic rock, it's a volcanic rock. It is, has an amazing ability to hold moisture and, as importantly, when you're growing in the ground, not so much in taking a cutting, to have in and of itself the mineral content of this rock, rock is high and it can hold and exchange nutrients for plant growth. So it's a very valuable propagation uh, ingredient as well as a good type of soil. And then here we have another type of volcanic rock, perlite, which is just puffed volcanic rock. It has no real nutrient content. It's mostly just uh, used because it's light and it has big particle size so you get pore space and it makes it easier for the roots to rupture through the stem, come out into the medium and get going and at some point when you have a a reasonable amount of roots on a cutting, you pot it up into a potting mix. So, and I've blended them together in a 50-50 mix. I've wet them slightly. Um, and the other thing that you don't have to use, but over the years I've found to be kind of indispensable, is some type of a rooting hormone. There are many products out there 
and they're kind of six of one, half a dozen of the other. Maybe let me caution you, you want to get just straight up rooting hormone, not as in some cases uh, you'll see rooting home hormones that are laced with the fungicide. Um, just straight rooting hormone. And this contains some hormones that are synthesized from plants that really facilitate rooting at the base of the cutting. Um, we'll take a, these cuttings and pot them up here in, in a minute. So these are your raw ingredients. Again, you can use any size container you want, typically a four inch pot or a gallon. I'm going with a gallon here. I will eventually, as I demonstrated before, stick a few bamboo stakes in there, invert a moistened uh, polyethylene bag over and get a contained mist box here. I'm going to uh, label it and then I'll use a pen here to get uh, double indemnity and I'm going to do it upside down. G.S. Thomas. Graham Stewart Thomas and today's date November 7. I might add Graham Stewart Thomas is a notice English gardener garden writer, garden historian, and probably the preeminent rose uh, expert on the planet. Only thing of it is he died a few years ago, but his legacy remains. He's written innumerable books that can be extremely informative, albeit they're a little kind of stilted in the language. He was a stuffy guy, but very knowledgeable. Okay, Graham Stewart Thomas. And so I'm going to take these cuttings And I'm just going to pour out a little bit of the rooting hormone into this container here. And then I'm going to come and dip the base in the hormone and gently insert it into the rooting media. You know, you can get a half dozen, eight, maybe nine. You want to have a little bit of distance between the cutting to aid air circulation. Uh, but something along the lines of this is reasonable. Uh, and I am, as it were, good to go. Now I will apply a little mist water here. I'll take polyethylene bag. And inverted, I'll stick a few bamboo stakes in there. I'll seal it at the base and I'll put it somewhere in the propagation area in the shade. I'll check it every five to ten days, re up the moisture as seems necessary. I will wait patiently, maybe uh, around the first of the year. It's November 7th now. We'll have some a nice little root system, three or four roots like that. And I will say this about roses as opposed to a lot of other things that you would make stem cuttings out of. Once they have a just even a minimal root system, you got to get them out of that rooting medium and into a soiled medium or they tend to desiccate, dry, rot like that. So you can do it. You can grow your own. Uh, if you don't have roses and you know people who have roses and you see a variety that strikes your fancy, well, sidle up to that individual and say, hey, down the road, I could give you something like this, if you give me a few cuttings. And indeed, if you take cuttings, you can have this, you know, maybe 12, 15 months down the road. It's all good.